Today I want to share my interview process, how I got my first job as a full stack developer. Welcome to DevRel, my name is Sam. Today is a good day, I will talk about how my interview process was um, for my first full stack web developer job. So the first uh, uh, job I ever got in the industry as a developer uh, while being a self-taught programmer. So after nine months of uh, starting to learn how to program, I got my first job and I want to talk about how the whole process went because it really helped me out watching other YouTubers videos about how they got a job and how the interview process was. And I think it helped me tremendously prepare myself and being confident for the whole interview process. So let's get started with the video. So first of all, I'm a Swiss guy living full time in Colombia, now working for a German company. But this doesn't mean that if you don't have kind of a special situation like that, like me, that this video won't apply to you or for you. This video still will apply for you because at the end of the day, the interview process is pretty much or very, very similar in most cases. So first of all, I got the hint that this position is open by a friend of mine. She worked in that company and said they're searching for uh, developers. So I applied for that job. And first, of course, the thing I did and I can recommend to everybody is to have a very, very nice polished CV. And what I do to stand out always, so I'm used to being in front of the camera, I have different YouTube channels. So for me, it was a no brainer, but I really encourage everybody, you can stand out with that thing more than anything else is to produce a video. So if you have a video talking about who you are, why you can help them and what your previous experience is, that will set you really, really set you apart from everybody else in the pack. So I can really encourage you to do that. I did that and uh, I know from now working in the company and talking to the people that they really appreciated me having the video. So that's how I got to the second round. So the second round was a quick 15 minute interview with the HR person about my personal values. It's kind of a, um, a very modern company where they set a lot of value on, on the values of their employees and the, the process actually was very lengthy. So I will talk about the whole process now. Um, so they, they talk, uh, talked about values, that specific kind of questions, which I didn't really have to prepare. I had to prepare. It was just for to, to getting to know me and see if I'm a good fit for the company in regards to the values. And then right after that, I got um, a kind of a, a little quiz to, just to know if I know anything about, uh, about programming. So for me, my full stack development position was for JavaScript and Node, so or React at the end of the day and Node. Um, and they had a little, let's say, just a basic JavaScript test with a tool that is called Test Dome. So it was all um, also kind of a timed test. So I had to, to finish the test in a certain amount of time. So there was a counter going. But at the end of the day, it wasn't really too hard of a test. It was more like for me to uh, for them to figure out if I have any idea of what I'm talking about. So that was already good. It was still quite stressful to do that test, especially after I found out that there is a counter. But yeah, I passed that test. And then uh, um, I knew that the next step would be the interview of the tech lead, uh, tech lead of that company. So I, as a self-taught programmer, I've never really thought, like I always thought I will do the freelancer route and not really kind of that, that uh, employee route. So I've never really uh, messed with the whole uh, algorithms you have to do with interviews and I always thought that's stupid. So because I wouldn't have to do that anyway. And now, yeah, I'm in the position of having to learn all these algorithms for specifically for these interviews, because as programmers, we know you have to do certain stuff on interviews. Uh, which you have never to do in, uh, in, in your real work life. So you just have to do that until you get the job. So I had a very, very intense weekend where, while three days of so Friday until Monday morning, I learned all these different kinds of algorithms for JavaScript that you have to do. I actually have watched a lot of video of tech Sith. So tech Sith. Um, I think at least he's Indian or he lives in Canada. I don't know, but I will link uh, his um, mock. So it interview mock videos where he pretends uh, with a viewer that they're really in an interview and he asks different questions about JavaScript and stuff. The, those videos are long, so they're I think for 45 minutes, but they're very, very good for you to find out 
uh, what an interview process could be like even though my interview process which I will talk about in a bit wasn't really that way it gave me a lot of confidence to um, to see how kind of an interview could go, go like and what I needed to know. So I googled everything, interview questions, uh, JavaScript interview questions, note interview questions and I memorized them. I learned them with my wife so she asked me stuff. She has of course no idea if the answers I gave are correct but for, for me just to practice. And then in my specific case I also practiced Spanish because I didn't know if the interview would be in English or in Spanish. If uh, um, it ended up to be both so it was good that I also span, uh, practiced my Spanish programming language because otherwise I'm fluent in Spanish but different things in programming language are of course different in Spanish so I had to do that as well. So the day came uh, Monday afternoon I had to do the interview and it was quite lengthy it was two or two and a half hours of just asking me about JavaScript, Node, React, class components, um, um, object-oriented programming, JavaScript, functional programming, what is the difference between a monolith and microservices in the back end, all of those things. And I would say I did pretty well, but it was quite uh, stressful. So it really, really helped for me to Google that specific questions because there were many questions that came up, uh, let's say these interview questions, which I actually learned for in my uh, prepar preparation of that. The crazy thing was that they had kind of a system going so I could hear he clicking on, 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 on a keyboard as let's say he, he asked me what are the, um, the, the, the advantages of functional programming over uh, uh, object oriented programming. And whenever I kind of hit kind of a key point, I could hear his keyboard click because it was an, uh, a virtual interview. So let's say I said, because it's, you have just a pure function and they're easier to read, for example, I could hear like click on the keyboard. So I knew I got a point. So uh, that was kind of good. So I tried at the end of the day just to get these points and just uh, throw out different kind of key phrases and keywords that, that would give me the points. Um, and then it was kind of weird. We got into this. So he shared his screen and he showed me different kinds of, of questions which were very weird and like these weird uh, interview questions you know you never really have to know them by heart so let's say what are the the pseudo elements uh, the, of, of CSS in regards to different hover states or I don't know things like that you would always google uh, and never really, really memorize them so we started off with them and I was like okay now here we go because until now it, the interview was quite functional so it was an interview of questions that I could relate to that I would say yeah these are legit questions and not just this algorithm thing you never really uh, have to know after you do the interview so I, I was okay now these kind of questions come up and I struggled there for a little bit on the first question and then he just kind of broke off that whole thing didn't share the screen anymore and just said you know what let's do a full stack application on React with Node. And I was like, okay, was I so bad on the, on the first question that he kind of broke uh, the, whole, the, the whole process of that questions off and that we do that now. And then I was like, oh wait, now I have to, to, to build a full stack application with React. So, wow, that's, that's the whole thing. So I started out with the front end. I'm a little bit more, uh, um, I'm a little bit better on the front end so I started that out I could show what I actually can do I shared my screen at that time uh, I explained what exactly I'm doing I also I let's say over explained why I don't do specific things now so I, I would say for example I like here because this is a test I don't do uh, the BAM uh, CSS convention so but usually I would do that and I could kind of show my uh, what I knew and uh, show that I'm capable of, of doing anything like that and I'm, I'm okay good with React, so I can build a React app with, uh, by heart, so just on the top of my head. But with Node, I didn't build a lot of applications with Node. Uh, uh, my full stack capabilities were a little bit more with Firebase uh, from, from Google. So then I just said, you know what, I just did what I could. I, I started to put some comments in. I would do this here and do this here. And when it came to the actual syntax, I just said openly and honest, you know what, now I would have to go into the documentation because I don't know how to build an express node API, uh, which was the part of the full stack part of this React node application by heart. 
And then he said, you know what, that's legit. That's uh, a good reason to say why you're not able to, to go forward. But let's, how, what, what do you think? How much time would you need to complete the API? And I was like, yeah, maybe a half an hour, an hour. And he said, okay, I don't have time anymore, but send me the code afterwards after uh, in, inside of an hour. And then that will be good. I already see, uh, I already like what I've seen so far. This would just be the end of the, of, the, of the interview process for me to see if you're able to do that. I was like, okay. So after two and a half very intense hours of asking, of, of answering questions and everything, um, I had homework now for like right afterwards. So I took, so I ended the call and I took a, a, a deep breath. I got some water, I calmed down for five minutes. And then I started with the Node API. Um, so I, I Google my things uh, to the solution like you should as a as a uh, as an inter uh, as a as a programmer. And I did that, and it actually went good. Then afterwards, um, so they they put uh, they I, I completed that round. So they put me on the next round, which I knew okay. I think I have a very good chance right now. So. The next interviews were more I was talking about with my colleagues or they were also virtually uh, because of the whole Corona situation. Usually I would go to the office and present myself, but it was virtually. So I had six different interviews again with my coworkers, but they were not as demanding. Let's say some of them asked me um, um, technical questions, other, others no. So I just went there, presented myself and answered a little bit of questions. And after them, after that, I knew they had like the whole team had another conference, like a, a video call, a call where they uh, talked about if I would be a good fit, if, I, if they think I'm, I'm technically sufficient to, um, to help them on, on their, their projects in their company. And yes, they said yes. So I got an offer. I accepted the offer. And that's pretty much the, the way how the whole process went. So a little recap. So especially the most demanding thing was for me that uh, the three days of learning where I learned all these algorithms, I didn't really have to do in the interview, which I was glad I didn't have to do them and just really pretty much show if I know what I'm talking about with all these uh, questions that I had to answer and then really build really a legit React, so JavaScript React um, uh, application with a Node backend, which I think from what I've heard, the interview processes are sometimes very, very distant from what we actually need to do on a daily basis, which in this case it wasn't, but it just gave me confidence to learn all these algorithms, uh, algorithm questions like these, these uh, how is that, not foobar, um, FISBUS was the right word, so these FISBUS algorithms, all these string to number, all of those things. So I didn't have to do that, so that was good. Uh, but yeah, it gave me confidence because I still learned them. So my three key takeaways of this application process for you, if you, um, yeah, what you should take away of this video is, first of all, I wasn't really, let's say a full stack, full on full stack developer. I know, knew a little bit Node and I was quite okay, good with, uh, with front end. So don't get, get disencouraged by the job title. I'm now working in this company, mostly front end, even though it said full stack developer. Um, they said they would teach me everything I needed in the back end to really make it as a, a, as a full stack developer with them. So that was already good enough. So don't get disencouraged if something says full stack and you just build more one or two full stack apps and the rest was more front end or more back end or anything like that. Don't get discouraged by that. I was mostly a front end guy, applied for a full stack development um, position and I got the job. Then the next thing is put in the work. So learn those things. Even though you don't know if you really need them, it gives you confidence, you're prepared and you, you can say once you start your application process, your interview process, you did whatever you could. And that gives you so much confidence uh, to talking with those, uh, those people uh, that already helps. And of course, it might or in the best case, it helps you really answer those questions also. And Another thing, which especially programmers, I know we don't really do that too much. We're not too salesy kind of person or people. But one thing is very, very important. Think about how you can be of help or helpful for the company. So don't tell them what you can do and what you can't do or what not. Try to think of in their perspective, they want most probably to hire a developer because they want to complete a project. So you present yourself as you want to help them to complete their project. You want to be in support of their team or something like that. So try to think of 
their way of thinking so why they want to employ you try to figure that out and help them figure out why you are the perfect person to uh, to fill or to to help that need so they have some kind of need that's why they want to employ somebody and you figure out a way why you are the perfect person for uh, to to fill that gap to fill that need yeah that was pretty much it for this video uh, i hope this video helped again check out the links to the description down below where i have some resources which you which should help you get an idea of how other interview processes work i hope this video gave you insight of how my process was and maybe it helps you prepare for your interview that might come up in a couple of days so yeah make sure to subscribe uh, to this channel to not miss other videos like that and uh, coding tutorials and everything like that if you like this video uh, please leave it a like and if you have any comments just put them in the uh, in the comment section down below see you in the next video